name is Matthias Kachamba. I'm the, uh, the chair of the Bankers Association and CEO of DFC Bank. But, Your Excellency, I wanted to share with you something first. Like your commitment to social economic transformation, mine has also been a journey of commitment to transformation of the economy through the financial services business. I have actually worked for all uh, of the government uh, commercial institutions. I've worked for Postbank at the time of the divestiture, earlier on when you were breaking up UPTC, for Pride Microfinance, transforming it into, uh, from Pride Uganda into uh, the commercial entity it is now. I've also been CEO for Housing Finance Bank, transforming that from a housing finance company into a commercial bank and reaching further people. And right now, transforming DFCU to reach further uh, the people at the bottom of the pyramid. And so, Your Excellency, we share that vision for social economic transformation through the provision of financial services. I come here to share that we are completely aligned. Banks are some of the most misunderstood institutions. And PSST one time mentioned to me that the challenge with you people is you really don't know how to explain yourselves. But your challenge is our challenge. Value addition in agriculture, expansion of manufacturing sector, export promotion, ICT and services, youth unemployment, uh, you know, the interest rates, and we'll talk about that, and human capital development. So we also ascribe to all the aspects of the NDP, and particularly that those that relate to us, sustainable economic development for all access to finance, financial sector development, and digital transformation. I want to talk a little bit about our sector, the 36 regulated financial institutions. Your Excellency, we have one of the highest levels of productivity in this country. 36 institutions contribute 25% of GDP. GDP, that's the sort of thing people clap for. Because that is 1% above agriculture. Agriculture employs 73% uh, of the population and contributes 24% of GDP. This sector of ours that employs 17,500 people contributes 25% of GDP. But I also wanted to share with you something, Your Excellency, that we support uh, government appetite, and it's one of the biggest challenges to the cost uh, of finance, and I'll come back to that. Of our total balance sheets of banks, 27% relates to treasuries. Treasuries are money we have made available for the PSST. Uh, to finance a number of things, that's about 10.26 uh, trillion shillings. So you see, only 41% of our balance sheets is actually going towards credit uh, expansion for development of the private sector. Now why is private sector growth very crucial? Private sector growth in terms of credit is very important because if you look at uh, economies around us, not even the really developed ones, Ours is 14% to GDP. Like I've explained, we can't have 100% of our total book in credit to the private sector because 25% is going to fund government paper. So 14% to GDP, if we compare to our neighbors in Kenya, 33%, South Africa, 129%. Your Excellency, I actually uh, want to argue that there is deep capacity for intake of private sector credit uh, in this country if there is no crowding out. And why is it so important? Look at the areas where we focus, and that's why I said we are totally aligned, Your Excellency. 12% of our total lending goes to agriculture, 12.4% goes to manufacturing. Now the 17.6% that goes to trade and the 20% that goes to building and construction is the transformation that you see around the country, uh, buildings going up, the growth of the mortgage sector, uh, etc. That is because of the credit uh, that we provide. There are a number of uh, risks to what we do and what leads to the costs that make us uh, you know, operate uh, the way we do, Your Excellency. A little bit about Uganda's uh, uh, bond yield. I want to address two questions that were raised by the PSST. He mentioned that interest rates have increased to 19.2% in October. And I had quite a number of murmurs from my colleagues, captains of industry. And I thought that's why it would be important to put this into perspective, Your Excellency. He also mentioned that why aren't rates coming down? We are the first proponents to want the rates to come down because, like URA, we want to increase the uptake of private sector credit. That's why we do financial inclusion 
so that we can reach further, so we put more people into the money economy. Because I just want to share with you, Excellency, in the last 10 years, when the economy under your leadership has grown at the fastest rate, we moved from 6 billion uh, to 40 billion as raised by uh, the PSST. The financial sector has actually been the fastest growing uh, sector. But why aren't rates coming down? Because if you look at the first uh, primary uh, uh, benchmark is uh, the rate of government paper. Today as we speak, the 15-year bond is at 16%. So the opportunity cost to lend to anybody here is that if I lend to government at 16.55%, it is risk-free. Then I have to add the cost of default, etc., and all of that to bring the cost down uh, if I lend uh, to the public. But there are a number of things we are doing to address the cost of funding. One is to address the cost drivers that are internal to us, increase our own efficiency as we do, and that's why we invest in significantly in automation. We want to work with Bank of Uganda on regulatory reforms. We would like to mobilize uh, co funding frameworks to reduce risk embedded. And those are some of the things we've seen at the agricultural credit facilities to remove the external cost drivers. Thank you so much, Excellency. It has said that uh, the Minister of Finance is the one causing the trouble by giving Treasury bills at 16%. So I think when I leave, Ramadan should answer that. <laughs> then I will ask him more later. Because that's definitely a mistake.